Hi, I'm Tamika Isaac Devine. I'm a wife, a mom, an entrepreneur, and a city councilwoman. Hello, I'm Jamie Devine, a husband, a father, and a community champion. I've been married to my wife, Tamika, for over 15 years. Join us as we interview some of our favorite couples, hear their stories, and be inspired. The secret to our successful marriage is that we are very intentional about our date nights. Hi, my name is Jamie. Hi, I'm Tamika. And we We are the Divines. Thank you so much for joining us for Date Night with the Divines. Today, we are so honored to have with us as our very first guest for Date Night with the Divines, a couple that inspires us so much. And that is Pastor Charles B. Jackson Sr. and the First Lady of Brooklyn Baptist Church, Robin Jackson. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. We appreciate y'all so much. Um, The reason that Jamie and I decided we wanted to do this show um, and the Lord really placed it on our heart is people are always uh, reaching out to us and saying how our love and our marriage inspires them. Um, But we really made us start thinking about, well, who do we look to uh, for guidance and inspiration? And of course, the first couple that came to our minds were the two of you. Yep. You guys have been instrumental in our marriage and raising our family. And so we wanted to introduce our guests to you to learn a little bit more about you and get inspiration from you guys as well. So we're mm-hmm. so glad that y'all are here. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, Pastor Jackson, we'll start with you first. How did you all meet? First of all, let me say how honored I am that you would think of the two of us after 44 years of marriage. We hope that there's something about, ma- about our marriage that will uh, give some encouragement and inspiration to others as well. Now, there's a slight variation, perhaps, between <laughs> how I see us having met and how Robin see us having met. So, but I defer to her, if you don't mind. Robin, yes, would you like to bring the attention to how we met somewhere when I was scheduled to preach as a youth pastor okay. when I was but uh, 17 years old? Okay, very good. That's very good. so funny. That's so funny. Um, actually, it's not much of a variation, but somewhat. Okay, we met uh, at the Zion Baptist Church. And um, that Sunday, I was invited along with my friends to come to their youth service. And so uh, back in that day, your parents wouldn't let you go anywhere mm-hmm. uh, unless your siblings went with you. All right. And so, and then they didn't let you go too far out of your regular things that you would right. do on Sunday morning. Right. Being a member of Friendship Baptist Church, um, you know, we was very active in our church as well. So I went to the Zion Baptist Church with my girlfriends, not knowing what to expect, but knowing that it was a youth uh, service. Okay. And so when I got there, here comes this young man across the pulpit, mm-hmm. you know, and all my girlfriends and I, and we're sitting there, and he comes across, and um, they immediately start shrugging each other, you know, <laughs> oh my God, you know. And so I'm like, hmm. No, just another man. Right, right, <laughs> you know? right. So I'm like, I'm here just, you know, for the service. Right. And so after the service, of course, he, he really did a very good job te- um, preaching to the youth. And back in that day, as well as today, it's so important that our youth are reached. And so being a very active member in my church, I thought after the service, after enjoying it so much, I said, I would love for him to come to my church. That's, that's, yes. I'm with you so and long. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so after, they was, the, the, the girls with me were saying, well, who's going to introduce? Who's going to introduce us? I'm like, oh, y'all, y'all just going a little bit too far. So I said, I'll introduce us. And I'll ask him if he would come to my church okay. to speak to our youth. Okay. So after service, um, I went up. Mm-hmm. And I introduced myself and told him how much I enjoyed the service, and um, I would like for him to come to speak to all you. Oh, wow. Well, I went home. And right after then, he said, well, give me your phone number. Huh? And so I gave him my number okay. and told him to call me right after church. Well, back in those days, the deacons who admitted your house, your grandfather would be sitting around the table. Mm-hmm. My grandfather was a deacon. Okay. And... Um, so I asked my grandfather, can I call the preacher and ask the preacher, can this young minister come and preach for us? And so we did. Oh, wow. And yeah. because I knew he was going to call me that afternoon. <laughs> and so 
I called my, my minister, and this is the, the funny thing about this whole thing. Uh, and my minister said to my grandfather, no, well, I'm not going to let no young minister, young minister come in my pulpit. Wow. Well, back in those days, the older ministers right. wouldn't allow that. Right. And so I had to, I was so disappointed mm -hmm. because I knew he was going to call. And so how was I going to break this news to him and tell him that he couldn't come to my church? Right? Okay. So then he called and um, I told him, no, they won't let you come. Would you believe it was... We were in our 50s before he actually got a chance to come to the church. Really? I, 50s? I, yes. I, I knew remember. it was a long time. The invitation was extended. A long time. Yeah, you a said long the whole time. Bible, but I a never received time. the invitation. He wow. never received the invitation wow. until That's around in our 50s. And wow. back then, that time was another pastor, of course. Right. And um, uh, That's wild. It, it's That's just so crazy how wild. God has a purpose. Yep. for your life and uh, you don't know what this purpose is you don't know who you're going to meet yep. and um, you have all the good intentions of doing something good for other people right and out of this came a union that I had no idea that I would meet a minister mm -hmm. of all people mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, meet a minister and marry a minister wow. and my girlfriends I actually would say to me you Married our minister. Right, right. <laughs> I concur 99.93%. <laughs> so where's your variation? I'm not so up. sure yeah. who gave who the telephone number or who uh, called who. The truth is, it took us a long time to get to that me. church to yeah. preach. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, called, you called me. All right. I okay. wouldn't have called you All because right. I don't do those things. All right. Like, okay. Yep. Yeah, please go ahead and eat while we finish the oh, conversation. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> So that is, that is amazing. So right. how old were you guys at that time? I was 18 and a freshman at uh, Benedict College. Wow. Okay. And I must have been, I'm that age, 17. 17. Yes. Okay. 17. Yeah. Okay. So that, you don't find people uh -uh. nowadays who meet at such a young yeah. age mm -hmm. and are you know, still, mm -hmm. still, still, still together. together. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. amazing. That's yeah. yeah. So good. So let me ask, um, so no matter the variation on how you met, <laughs> um, I should be okay. How'd you both figure, how'd you figure out that she was the one? I mean, how, I'm sure yeah. at that age, there were lots of folks who, who were uh, thinking that, oh, he looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, what made she you think she's the one? from my perspective, was her love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, she wow. was a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I believed in the spirit of God that I saw in her. Because I was a young preacher at that time, having right. been a licensed preacher for eight years. Mm -hmm. Because I began preaching with a license at 10 years old, so I was 18 years old, preaching at the Zion Chapel Church, okay. where they used the observance, and so that was a uh, key and paramount for me to know that she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then mm -hmm. she was a musician, mm -hmm. and she the old time way, basically, okay. was it was a benefit to a pastor, <laughs> if I were to become a pastor, to have a wife who knew something about music, right. because right. See, right. I could not sing. I did right. not have the gift of talent of singing, so right. I did not sing. Right. So maybe the Lord was looking out for me <laughs> and sending someone in my direction That's right. who sang real well. That's right. And when I heard her sing, I said, oh, That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the Lord may be at work for real. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's all right. In yeah. fact, um, right. I don't think he heard me sing until I was in a Jabberwock. You know the Jabberwock? Yeah. 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 Jabberwock. Mm -hmm. yeah, Delta. Uh, I was in a Jab Jabberwock contest. <laughs> And it was at Allen University, and um, that's when I got a chance to see him again. And uh, yes, and so it was at that uh, Jabberwock contest, and um, I think I won. I sang, and uh, I saw him there, and again, we got numbers and called. Wow. And it started again. Yeah. So how, how long did you guys date before you decided to get married? It was four years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So, um, kind of what you talked about, that leads me to really a really pressing question for me. I mean, one mm -hmm. of the things that we talk about a lot um, when we're talking to couples is mm -hmm. the importance of having someone who supports your goals and your vision and your dreams. Mm -hmm. And what Pastor Jackson just said about, you know, really the, the Lord played a part in bringing y'all together, um, but because mm -hmm. certainly the Lord had a, had a, a a plan mm -hmm. for his life, mm -hmm. starting as a youth mm -hmm. minister, 
and building Brooklyn Baptist Church from you know what some people would call a small country church to a mega church with an international impact of 8,000 members at this point. Mm -hmm. And so I know he didn't like the name uh, mega church, but it really mm -hmm. is a mega church. And we're now in you know phase three. Mm -hmm. We've got two campuses. I mean, it's been amazing. So mm -hmm. um, with that, how do you see your role in um, supporting the vision that God had for him and, and making sure that with everything that comes at him, you're able to, to support him, but also be yourself and, and pursue your goals and your dreams. Okay. Well, as I said before, it was not my desire to marry a minister, mm -hmm. but um, I also look at it as God's plan mm -hmm. and will for my life. In fact, we were 17, as I said, when we met, and um, upon dating, uh, and deciding to get married uh, at an early age. We married at 21. And I was still in school at the University of South Carolina majoring in music. In fact, in performance, in vocal performance. And um, having one more semester to complete before we actually got married, and him leaving Benedict and graduating, and then moving on to seminary. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, Prior to him going to seminary and prior to my actually graduating with one more semester, he asked if I would marry him before he went to seminary. Okay. Of course, I had to go to my mom and my dad mm -hmm. and ask them mm -hmm. uh, because I was not quite finished with school. And they said, if you really feel that you, you know, want to marry him and he's the one, then it's okay. Good. So what happened? I left, um, I mean, he, he left uh, for, for seminary, mm -hmm. and um, we well, we married prior to that. And um, uh, I just feel that, um, again, this is God's will. Um, I don't think I've missed anything from not going into performance, mm -hmm. uh, because I've been able to use my talents Right. at the Brooklyn Baptist Church uh, from the early, early uh, onset of our marriage mm -hmm. and um, as a director of the youth choir of which when I first was thrust into it, mm -hmm. I had no idea of how to direct children. Mm -hmm. Everything was about Robin and it wasn't about performing right. and moving on in the direction that I was pursuing. Right. And he really supported that even when he went to seminary. And... Um, uh, we never looked at it as anything separate, but because of our individuality, um, we accepted each other for who that person was. And so as I supported him in his uh, gifts and, 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 and what God had in, in, in plan for him to move on to the seminary, he supported me in my music and knowing that I had to complete it so that I could continue to do what I wanted to do. And so he um, left, as I said, and then he came back to my recital at the university. And um, of course, we were married then. And um, then of course, I got into the church aspect of it all. Right. So right. I graduated thinking that, hey, I'm going to New York. I'm gonna see the big lights. I'm uh, gonna perform on stage. Right. But God said what? No. I have something else in plan for you. And so I accepted it because I loved him. And, and I didn't look at the ministry of any, as anything of, of a struggle mm -hmm. because I was so confident in who I was mm -hmm. and what I was doing right. until I just accepted it for what it was. Right. I liked the person. I liked his humor. I liked, I liked the, the fun times. I, I just liked being with him. Mm -hmm. And... We really connected as friends. Right. And so as I accepted my role as a pastor's wife, mm -hmm. I didn't look at it so much as a pastor's wife, but just as a wife right. and as a friend right. and doing what I had to do. Right. And so through the years, I can honestly say, I just do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. um, there is no struggle in anything I'm doing as a pastor's wife. I accept the role. Uh, I tried to be an example for others. Um, I, as I said, we came into it uh, not with me actually having a role uh, in the church at that time in a ministry, 
But because of the music, uh, I was thrust upon being the director of the children's choir. And I said, oh my gosh, I, have, I do not know what to do with the children's choir. Right. And so uh, I did, and that choir grew uh, with God's grace to over 100 uh, children through the years. Good, good, and good. Uh, I began uh, really having a love for children mm -hmm. at that time because also I started having my own children. And so that put me in another kind of arena, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. an area of my life and love right. in serving, but serving outside of myself, but serving to help others. Mm -hmm. And so that, that became my ministry. And so... Um, Bef let me say this. Be yes. Before we go too much further, before you get into the book, let me just ask the pastor just one question. Mm -hmm. So when you all were separated, I don't want to separate, when you were in the seminary, uh -huh. how long was seminary? Three years. Three years. Three years. So, so were you back and forth? Were you yes. in Atlanta or were you? Did not stay in Atlanta a single weekend. The curriculum okay. was so designed that uh, commuting pastors uh, would have classes suspended on Monday okay. and uh, they concluded on Friday at 12 noon. Okay. So therefore, I would take care of the pastor, work on the weekend and share time with uh, Robin uh, during that time and then leave Monday late afternoon, make our winter classes, and then at 12 Friday we return. And I was fortunate to have a seminary roommate who um, uh, lived in Whiteville, North Carolina, so we right. ride together. Okay. And so therefore, neither of us were, was alone. I was the first year at a seminary roommate, the Reverend Stanley Walker from uh, uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. His wife and Robin were cousins, so they okay. lived together while we were there. Oh, nice. Very good. Nice. So, so in this age, and, 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 and young people go through, go through a lot, and we hear a lot about people living apart and living separated. Mm -hmm. During that time, mm -hmm. uh, in your opinion, was there any temptations to, to uh, look at other people or to uh, be with other people, or were you just committed to what you were doing at that time? The word for me is focus, and I won't reference that probably. No, the word for me is focus. I was so committed to the Brooklyn Church ministry, and I did not look upon our marriage as being separate from the Brooklyn Church ministry. And so the total commitment was the large picture of the Brooklyn Church ministry, of which I thought Robin was a significant part, because I would want to think that the major, that the major influence and inspiration from our, in our marriage, and sustain our marriage, is that the, we had a mutual respect for the other's gifts and talents and several abilities. And that was very, very important. She had a respect for what God had called me to do. I had a respect from, for what God had called her to do. And so we kind of integrated those two into a, a complete good. whole. That's good. That's good. So, and I do want to get to the book um, because that's part of what, you know, led you to, to write this. for joining us for Date Night with the Divines. Uh, we are here at the amazing Brooklyn Banquet and Conference Center having lunch, our double date this month with our pastor and first lady, Charles B. Jackson Sr. and Robin Jackson. And again, thank y'all so much for, for having lunch with Jamie yes, and I and, yes. and really sharing some information that we think that will be a blessing 
uh, to those watching us. So um, before we um, uh, got went to break and wanted to introduce our sponsors, I was about to ask you, um, Mrs. Jackson, about um, just the way your journey has been. And you have this amazing book, Pleasures and Perils, Two Ministers' Wives Reflect on Friendship, Marriage, and Ministry, that you co-wrote with your friend um, and fellow uh, First Lady, Margie Flowers. And so you were talking about just being true to your, your gifts and, and being supportive of each other and your gifts. And you have the gift of music. Um, and that's where you kind of started off. But I don't think that when you were doing that, you thought that you would become an author. Um, but you have been. So tell us what made you um, decide to write this book and what do you think it will we'll mm -hmm. give, especially not just the, the pastor's wives, but wives in general about, you know, being a wife and, and how that um, being a partner in a marriage works. Okay. Well, uh, I never thought that I would write a book. Right. <laughs> No, it was the farthest thing from my mind, but I always journal. And uh, I began journaling back in the 80s. And uh, not knowing where it would take me or if it, it wasn't, it wasn't my desire for it to reach anybody. But it was just, um, just me throwing my thoughts out on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and uh, my feelings as, as I went through life and its different challenges and, um, and, and good things as well as bad things. So I never thought that I would write a book. Uh, but it was uh, when my husband and I traveled to um, Florida. We were on our way actually to visit our friend, Reverend Stanley Walker in Tallahassee, Florida. And we were with two other friends of ours and, and <laughs> a young lady who also as my best friend who co-authored the book, Margie Flowers, and her husband. So all of us were in the van, and we were traveling towards uh, go going to Tallahassee. And so as we traveled, we had conversations, and one of the conversations was um, our husbands are always going places and preaching and, and speaking. And, and we jokingly said, oh my, well, you know, we need to start going places and speaking, and, and we can do that, you know, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, 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 in a jokey kind of a way, not really thinking that anything was going to come out of this. And so uh, my husband said, well, you know, Robin, let's think about this. I really think that you need to really tell your story. Right. And so Margie and I looked at each other, and... Uh, we said, uh, really? <laughs> and so he said, I think people really want to know how you made it. How did you do it? How did you do it for um, this length of time? And still doing well and having a raise uh, to children who are achievers and doing well in life and, um, and, 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 and our marriage still being fruitful. And, 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 and in a loving state. So he said, people need to know how you're doing this. Mm -hmm. And so Margie and I looked at each other, and of course her husband being the, the, the joker in the group, Dave said, yeah, Margie, yeah, I think you all need to do this. You need to, two of you need to call for this and do this. And so we said, now if you all are really serious, mm -hmm. are you serious about this? Do you think that um, people would really want to hear what we have to say? And so, and then again, we asked our husbands, we said, are you sure that you want us to tell the story? <laughs> right, right, right. You know, and so they went, oh, yes, you know, people need to know this. Right. So March and I contemplated on it after um, the trip mm -hmm. and prayed over it, talked to our husbands again to make sure that they were in agreement with us doing this. And uh, then thinking about what we would actually say. So from that, we, we looked at our journals. Mm -hmm. I did not know that Margie had journaled for so many years. She did not know that I had journaled. And we've been friends for over 40 years. Wow. We got married on the same day, three hours apart. Neither of us could attend the other's wedding. Right. I did not even know Margie because her husband, Dave, was Charles's roommate. Okay. In, in the seminary. And so uh, 
we became the best of friends. We were both Tauruses. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we, are, we call ourselves sisters with another mother. Right. <laughs> we're, we're just that close. And that's, a, and that's really a gift, and that's really a treasure, because when you have two best friends who were friends in seminary and they're ministers as well, uh, the wives need to get along, wouldn't you think? Oh, yeah. And so when we met, and we were, when she came in February, I believe, after they graduated, she came to Columbia, and that was my first time meeting Marjorie. And we just hit it off right away. So it's interesting, kind of, um, so that's one of the things that um, Jamie and I do. We talk a lot about what mm -hmm. our individual goals are and how mm -hmm. we can support each other right. through those mm -hmm. things. Um, and sometimes, even, I, you know, I'll have a goal or a vision, and I'm like, wow, you know, this is it, but Jamie will even add his input and say, you know, well, mm -hmm. that sounds great, well, have you thought about this? Why don't you do this? And so it's interesting because a lot of folks talk about some of the things that I'm doing and don't realize that a lot of things I do um, actually becomes bigger because of Jamie and him pushing me and supporting right. me to say, mm -hmm. you know, do mm -hmm. this. So I love how you say that mm -hmm. you are kind of jokingly about the book, but right. your life partner said, no, it's not a joke. You should do this. You this is what this. people right. should, should hear. Um, right. And I love that because I think so many times couples are thinking about individually and they're not mm -hmm. thinking about how they can support each other to do something that is still supportive of togetherness, mm -hmm. but it's their own things. So I love that. I love that. Yeah. And as we began writing, you know, she and I had our apprehensions because, uh, you know, we wondered uh, whether we were saying the right things and uh, whether we should share everything that was in our journal. Uh, some of the things we may not have wanted others to hear, right. uh, but we, we thought being real was something that um, was needed in this day and time, especially with the, the, the younger ministers' wives um, and younger wives as well, and, and women in general, men in general, uh, people need to be more real. People need to um, be who they really are. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when people can appreciate you, when you can share some of the things that others have been through and um, in a helpful way, in a helpful way. And then others know that, yes, you've been hurt. Yes, you've gone through some pain, but guess what? You've come out, you've come mm -hmm. through it. You've come right. through victoriously. That's right. And so that's my right. message in my book, you know, is yes, we know God's will and plan, but at the same time, he will bring us through. And when he brings us through, oh my gosh, uh, in such a way that you live a more victorious life where you can help others. Mm -hmm. And so um, our thing is Marjorie and I um, are, are on a book tour. And we're hoping to reach as many ministers, wives, and women across the nation that we can. My son, um, Reverend Charles Jackson Jr., uh, put it on his Facebook page. I'll never forget because I'm not a Facebook person. Mm -hmm. and, and when the book first came out, he put the book out and he said, everybody should read my mom's book and, and my, uh, Margie's book, he said, because this book not only will help ministers, wives, but it will help women and men as well. And so... Um, I think men need to see, and Tamika, you know, our sides as well, and how we feel, and as well as we know how they feel in life and in the marriage and relationships. It's also a book about friendships. Um, it's important to have a, a dear friend. And Margie and I, as I said, have been friends for over 40 years. We never thought that we would be a friend, but just look at what God did. They brought two other friends together, and the wives became the best friends. Right. And so we often say, if anything happened to Charles and Dave, we would still be friends. Right. But we know Dave and Charles would be friends. Right. So um, the book, I hope, is a blessing to uh, not only ministers' wives, but women in general, men. How can people get the book if they're interested in the book is on Amazon. The book is also in the bookstore in Greenville, South Carolina, one of the Christian bookstores. Okay. And um, we have the book in our bookstore here at the Brooklyn Baptist Church okay. as well. Great. Great. So, Pastor, when Tamika and I first got together, before we um, got married, uh, we did counseling with you. And I uh, remember that very vividly. And, and you talked uh, extensively about different things that we should look for, some pitfalls, um, some of the good and some of the bad of marriage. And one of the things that you uh, emphasize, and we emphasize it now in our marriage, is this thing of uh, family night. Mm 
Can you speak a little bit about Family Night and, and the importance of, of how you came about that and how you were counseling and, and in your personal marriage? Having begun preaching at an early age and uh, taking note of some of the senior pastors, I noted that in far too many instances, uh, the children of pastors were not very successful or high-achieving children. And uh, I began reasoning as I looked about it uh, that um, perhaps one of the reasons may have been uh, was because the pastors were so very busy caring for the people of the church mm -hmm. ministry to the neglect sometimes of their own family. Wow. Uh, you know, wow. thinking that the family is all right because he's there in the family. So I made a conscious effort, it was intentional, to make sure I spend time with my family. And so therefore, Tuesdays and Friday nights became family nights for us. Um, which meant that it mattered not what I was doing in the ministry uh, on a Monday or Wednesday or Thursday or Saturday or Sunday. Our family knew that husband and uh, dad would be with them on Tuesday and Friday nights. I think it had served as well. So that became very quality time for us. And that did not mean that we would not be together on other nights, but we tried not to let anything interfere with those nights to which we committed ourselves as family. That's good. That's good. That's good. And we do the same. So our family night is Friday night. Oh, good. So, so Friday night for us. That's very good. important. Because you get so very busy exactly. pursuing your career, man, exactly. engaging your profession or whatever it is you're exactly. doing, that exactly. you sometimes take for granted that your family is going to be there and understand. Right. Now, one of the reasons I encouraged her to write that book mm -hmm. was because I believe strongly that any woman who can uh, deal with my very demanding schedule for some 40 years mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, serve with a great deal of dignity and pride as first lady of the Brooklyn Church right. and uh, raise two pretty high achieving children and still retain her uh, looks and her good health That's and right. her mm -hmm. sane mind That's right. has something to say That's right. that other women ought to want to hear. That's right. That's right. Right. That's right. Right. Has something to say that other women ought to How did you do it, Mrs. Jackson? That's it. Thank you. That's yeah. it. I agree. That, that's so important because, you know, when I asked the question before about support, too, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think it, it needs to be repeated that mm -hmm. you started as a youth pastor. You started a, a small country church. You built Brooklyn Baptist Church to over 8,000 members, one church, two locations, international impact. You do, you know, you know do missions work in, in other countries. Um, you have presidents who have called upon you guys mm -hmm. um, and have been here and visited um, here at Brooklyn. And so your impact is, is felt more worldwide. Um, but I think so many times people forget they see the person, they see the pastor, mm -hmm. and they don't think about the fact that in order to be a successful pastor and have this international impact, mm -hmm. you had to have a life partner who not only you know, is there to support you, but also there to, you know, hear when things aren't going great, to, you know, to lift you up, to maybe be your outlet. And so kind of tell us how is that? Because I think sometimes people feel like I don't want to burden my family or I don't want to, you know, tell the person I love when I'm depressed or things aren't working right. How, do, mm -hmm. how does that work for you guys? How do y'all have those conversations? And, and do you feel like it's important to be able to have that outlet um, when you come home? Are you speaking of talking to each other about yeah. the concerns yeah. of the ministry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and being okay. able to be, you know, just free with whatever. Because uh -huh. yeah. I'm, I'm uh -huh. sure there is times that you feel like, as you know, Pastor Jackson, I can't. I, I I've got to be on top of everything. Because of mm -hmm. course, when we see you, and I, we know mm -hmm. the last couple of years with the loss that y'all had in, in mm -hmm. church and the ministers, and mm -hmm. you've ministered to so many people. You minister to us during the loss of our son, okay. so you have to deal with so much. And then, so I know that can be hard. So how do y'all kind of deal with that when you have to, not also have to, you know part of your role is supporting each other. How do y'all have those conversations and be, just be able to release that with all the pressure that you might have? One thing I can say is our home is a safe haven. Mm. And it's always been that way. That's good. That's um, good. We never imposed anything on our home life from the church, from the beginning. Uh, my whole family was led to enjoy life as it is. Um, our family life is, is this something that we just do? We are, we are ordinary people. <laughs> uh, in fact, um, we do the ordinary things that everybody do. You know, there are big pots on the stove. 
Uh, <laughs> you know, I sew and, 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 and clean house and, and do things that other people do, okay? But when we come home, it's a place where we can be ourselves and our children feel the same way. Uh, I've always told my kids, um, be yourself. Uh, you don't have to, to impose, be, be different. Just be yourself. So when we come home, it's just a time when we are just ourselves, I think. Um, we don't have much time to talk about the ministry because we're home. It's about home life. So it's about you all. Yes, it's about, it's about home life. Cool. Now he may mention it's a funeral or right. something going on right. or, or something. Uh, or, or something about a member, or not right. about a member, but something going on within the church. Right. Right. But right. home is a time when we just enjoy family, and, and, um, and, enjoy each other. and we put on our relaxing clothes, and right. we're just home. Okay. I, I want to think that we believe mm -hmm. in the God that each of us, each other has. Mm -hmm. She believes in the God spirit that I have. Mm -hmm. I believe in the God spirit that she has, and then that trust factor becomes right. very, very important mm -hmm. to us, and that has helped sustain us. With all the heaviness we find ourselves sometimes having to carry. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's, mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's We good. both know God. That's good. And that's a good thing. And that's important. Uh -huh. And we have a personal relationship right. with the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. And that's good. important. And so that's the perspective from which we view everything that we do. And we're comfortable with ourselves. Right. And that's mm -hmm. so important um, in relationships. Yeah, yeah, it's so important that you know who you are. Right. And I tell that to a lot of women. You know, know who you are and whose you are. You know, and feel comfortable with who you are. Right. Um, and then you won't have to look for the other person to uh, define you right. because you feel comfortable with who you are. Right. I think that's how I've made it in this, this, this ministry right. so long. Um, when I sit in church, is, you know, people look at the book. The book on Baptist church is a big church, you know, right. and they tell me that, you know, you all go to that big church over there. I really have not gotten to the point where I see that. Right. I still see myself as the same little Robin that attended the church on, on Monticello Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see no difference. I mean, I can, in fact, my studio is not far from the church. Mm -hmm. And I can look at the church that was on Monticello Street mm -hmm. and, and think back in the day of the things that we would do there, the Girl Scouts and, right. the, and playing the organ and different things in the choir. But then I can also see this church, but it doesn't have such a big impact on me and make me be different. Right. I'm you not different you. yet. Like, you you. I sit on that front row and right. it's okay. Right. Um, I don't wear big hats. Right. I don't pretend. Yeah. I am me. Sometimes I have to catch myself because right. I'll throw my arm across the seat and get too relaxed. Right. And then right. I'll go, okay, right. <laughs> I am in church. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but um, it's all about listening to the, the, the minister I don't see him, you know, as anything separate but a man of God on Sunday morning. And so um, uh, it's nothing different. And that's so important that we can be ourselves. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Being yourself is good. Being yourself yeah. is good. So, so, so while we're um, talking about that, so just, um, just want to hear from you all individually mm -hmm. for young, younger couples who are just getting married one to five years, those who are in the middle, kind of like Tamika and I, mm -hmm. and those who may be uh, more veterans and more, more seasoned uh, persons who are married, what type of advice, what type of uh, things would you tell about marriage that, that will help them continue uh, mm -hmm. on, the, on the road of marriage? I did a class some years ago called Surviving and Thriving for women Who've been married one to five years. I did that class. That was I think we were we were been married like two years at that. You were in that class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that class had such an impact on women until some of the husbands were coming to me and saying, "You know what? You need to do it again." All right. <laughs> or maybe you need a class for men. Right. But um, I'm saying that to say that we reached a lot of women. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I would say to young couples is trust God. Know that he's God. And he's God all by himself. He has already placed in you who he wants you to be and who he wants you to be with according to his will and his plan. Trust God. Believe God. 
and he will direct your path. Right. Well, Jamie, to me, I think it's become rather evident who the talker is in this family. <laughs> <laughs> a man of a few words. Yes, sir. But yes, there sir. are two words yes. that are powerfully significant in meaning in mm -hmm. sustaining a marriage. Mm -hmm. And those two words are given to us during the ceremony. And those two words are I do. All right. Mm -hmm. I do. I do mm -hmm. speaks of the commitment that you right. to the marriage. Yes, sir. I do accept Robin as she is, though there may be some things undesirable about her. She does accept me as I am, though there may be some things that are undesirable. And we will pray. And, and as she has said, trust God to help us work through the things that are about that may be undesirable, some challenges that we may personally have ourselves. Right. Because the, the challenge that uh, we face is this. Inevitably, we think we can change the other person. That's oh, right. And that's become, that, that, that's right. so very difficult. And that's why I said the spiritual perspective is so very, very important. Because the truth of the matter is we really cannot change ourselves. And so if I set out to change Robin, and Robin sets out to change me, it's going to suppress our individuality. And it's going it's to harm us when they go down the road. Mm -hmm. So uh, those two words are very important to understand and embrace what the two words I do actually mean. When you come to this altar, you say to the officiating minister, I do accept her. I do accept him. And we will put everything else in God's hand. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's commitment. Two words, I do. All right. Amen. 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 Well, that is a wonderful way to, to end. Thank mm -hmm. you guys so much Thank you. Yes. for, for Thank you. supporting us in, in this vision mm -hmm. and sharing and, and being our first guest yes. uh, for date night with the divines. Um, it is a blessing. Um, and a privilege for us to be able to have lunch with you guys. So thank you. And thank you for having us. Thank you all. Thank our pleasure. Yes, thank sir. You. Thank you. And our prayers will continue to be with you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us for the very first episode of Date Night with the Divides. Um, we want to thank our sponsors. We've got uh, Isaac Insurance Agency, uh, State Farm. We also have Jabber and Isaac and Dr. Macy Smith. And of course, our venue sponsor, Brooklyn Baptist Banquet and Conference Center. So for your next event, or if you're having lunch, or you need a venue to host something, please consider Brooklyn Baptist Banquet and Conference Center. We have enjoyed being here. Um, so until next time, thank you so much. I'm Tamika. And I'm Jamie. And, and we, we are, are the Divides. <laughs>